Hello and welcome to Tully River Quail. Um, now that we have our dishwasher incubator going and rolling and working, we're going to start working on this wine cooler. So let me show you what I've done so far. This wine cooler is a two chamber cooler. So it has a middle section here that let me see if I can has a middle section that has a fan that sucks the hot air from the top and blows it into a chamber a wall that bypasses the heaters and then comes back out through this chamber um, you'll see I put a metal vent an additional vent here I cut a little square out using a reciprocating saw or an oscillating saw and a guide and I took a little bit of this Lincoln material because I put in a secondary heater I like to have heat one heat two it's actually a 500 watt heater this is a 100 watt heater that came with this wine cooler refrigerator thing it also has a couple of sensors there's one here um, you'll see one on the outside plus there was another one that was attached to this there's one under this here but so kind of what I did is I added this I put a little metal plate that I had leftover metal from the dishwasher uh, video or a viewing box cut out and back that so that it doesn't melt anything and then this will fit here and you'll see that the heater is right behind there this area and I'll show you this in a second is the chamber where the air goes in there's a fan that blows out now I have this fan connected to the same wires as the two fans that are on this little center unit so I'm gonna keep that running all the time just as a circulation fan you also see that I cut a hole in the insulation on the inside and I put in one of these little two dollar fans that I got from the computer store salvage brute and that will be my overheat protection and I gotta figure out a way to put another one here on the bottom to bring in air because I want to be able to bring fresh air in since this is hermetically sealed pretty much once it's closed these door frames are pretty pretty tight so it's not gonna get much oxygen except through the wire hole there so let me just show you on the back I drilled a little vent pattern for the exit hole and has some screw holes to mount that brute fan that blows air from the inside out um, it's wedged in there so nice inside this inch and a half thick insulation that I really don't need to screw it in there but anyway this is the center plate that separates the top and the bottom I guess the idea was red wine you can keep warm white wine you want chilled so they made a cooler on the top and a heater on the bottom that's why you had the 100 100 watt heater on the bottom anyway but once you look in here you'll see that this sucks the air from the top this will be, goes in the middle rack right this whole thing fits right in the middle rack where you see the trays that I have have these slideys this one doesn't so that just fits right in there and the controls to change the temperature were on that little face plate so that would fit there which I may instead of using this big XM18 that I got that I was gonna put over here and run cable um, I might just put a smaller little lily tech thing if I can get it to fit and just do the temperature and humidity in a little chamber here that would be inside but it would still be nicer anyway so let's look underneath this this is the cover plate and then there's these fans but they go through channels air channels so it sucks it in and it blows it out through these air channels and it also sucks it in from here 
So that'll help communicate the two areas. The heat that's coming from here will get sucked back up and redistributed. The heat that's coming out here will get sucked through the top two vents and get redistributed. So it'll be a central circulation as opposed to a top-down circulation. Uh, let me see if I can show you what I did on the, the, the back here without getting too crazy. Uh, so you see I have a power strip there and I have different markings on it. Fan um, with a wire color. The light, the relative humidity. So each one of those, I cut the power from the main feed and put in a separate power feed so that's going to come from that socket, individual socket, will get energized by the power from the relay within this controller. And I have two of them that are just hot 110s. But that's pretty cool. That fits in there real nicely. Also, what I did is this is the main power box that screws to the bottom of this. I put in a transformer, 12 volt transformer. So you just connect these primaries to the main electric, and then this gives out 12 volt. So anything that I wanna run 12 volt constant, that can, uh, that doesn't have to be triggered or switched. So if I wanna have a light on in there, if I wanna have a light that I could put a switch somewhere else or a dimmer or something, I can run my power straight from there instead of using one of those transformers on the cable. All right, well, that's where we got so far. Um, I'll let you know when I get a little closer, but should be a nice little build. It fits right next to that. I'm not sure if I'm going to put an egg turning mechanism on these trays. These trays are nice. Uh, I'm going to put a little layer of Lincone, some perforated aluminum over top of this, and build plexiglass walls. I might just use this as a hatching box and not put egg turners in this one like I did with the other. But uh, we'll see, who knows, I end up going that extra step because I'm retired and bored easy. <laughs> All right, have a great day. See you from Tully River Quill. Stay free.